Well guys, it's time to feature a new-to-me instrument. I just acquired this uh, HP 5359A time synthesizer. It uh, falls under the category of uh, pulse generators. It uh, is used to generate extremely accurate uh, pulse trains all the way down to uh, 10 picosecond increments of all things. But anyway, it's a fairly simple instrument to operate. Uh, once I got kind of past a couple of errors it was producing that I'll cover here in a little bit, uh, you can select your uh, operating frequency either by uh, megahertz or kilohertz or hertz, or you can also specify it in period. You can then select your pulse width. Right now it's default. This is how it powers on, comes on at 1 megahertz and sets the uh, the width at 100 nanoseconds, which I just verifying here on my scope. But to change the width, you just simply, let's go to 500 nanoseconds. And voila, there they are. And uh, you can do the same thing with, uh, with frequency, of course. Let's see, let's change that back to 100 nanoseconds. And then to enter the frequency, of course, you can just go 5 megahertz. And voila, there we go. Now, when I originally got this, I uh, it had a couple of problems. It uh, When you power it on, you would have an error 4, which is a PLL unlock error. And uh, but you could clear it just using the clear key, and uh, the thing operated appeared to operate just fine. The other issue I was having is that I couldn't run this calibration routine uh, because it was coming up with a 9.1 error, which is a calibration issue. And so once I cleared that, I just kind of played around with a little bit more and uh, just verified that it was operating. Uh, correctly, uh, including uh, the outputs here. We got uh, two volts peak to peak. That's what we're showing on the scope. And then, of course, here is your offset. You can turn that on and you can uh, move the offset around. You get a nice convenient readout. And it also shows you in volts. But anyway, yeah, so I had to pop the top off and I just did a general inspection. It was really clean on the inside. Uh, this thing doesn't seem to have been used a lot, but uh, it seems to have uh, you know, undergone some uh, you know, some physical abuse. Uh, I think it was uh, tipped over at one time, but uh, other than that, the thing's actually pretty darn clean. But anyway, I'll let me uh, move the scope out of the way, and uh, we'll open it up, and I'll show you the inside. Well, guys, here's what she looks like on the inside. This, uh, this instrument's construction is almost identical to the, uh, the HP uh, 53, uh, there we go, 5370B that's right there. Uh, it uses the whole back end of it's identical. Uh, the same power supply over here, the same uh, reference oscillator and support cards. And it apparently you also uses the same backplane uh, board. The only difference, of course, is that the, it's populated with a different set of cards. Now, when I opened this up, I found that the, uh, of all things, this, this delay line was pulled from its retention clips and was laying down in between these two cards here. I went, well, the only way that's going to happen is if you physically detach it or the instrument falls and uh, supports a shock that, uh, you know, separates it. So what I think happened is that somebody serviced this and either didn't put it back all the way or something. And so when I reattached that and I reseated all the cards, I reseated them twice including all the cards back here. And then I powered the unit back up and all of the errors went away. But it looks like somebody had been in here and 
had done some work with it. There's a couple of uh, things here. So I, as far as I can tell, there's nothing wrong with it, other than the initial uh, errors that I was having. I've uh, had this thing running for two days, and it has not failed yet. So hopefully, uh, maybe this will be all that I need to do with it. But uh, it's nice. But I bought this <clears throat> because. It was on my shopping list of test equipment. Uh, my shopping list is the list of equipment needed to uh, service certain instruments. And uh, one of those instruments are several uh, frequency counters that I own. Uh, one of them being the 5370B and uh, the HP uh, 5335A sitting over there. This is used to uh, verify performance on, uh, on uh, pulse accuracy and so forth but uh, other than this um, all I've got left to do is just uh, adjust the reference it was a little off when I first got it after I let it uh, warm up for about an hour I, I checked it and it was a good 500 millihertz off so I tweaked her in there temporarily so I will uh, let it warm up for another day or so and then I'll uh, adjust the reference and uh, find a spot somewhere <clears throat> on my cluttered desk and uh, <laughs> put it into service but anyway well, there you go that's the, uh, the HP 5359A time synthesizer a very nice instrument so hey yeah, guys I'm done rambling here so I'm going to get back to what I was uh, working on here and just wanted to just stop and just do kind of a quick overview of this. Let you, uh, you know, decide for yourself if you want to pick one of these up. Uh, these are still all over eBay. Some of them are a little expensive. <clears throat> Some, especially the ones that have been, you know, <laughs> serviced, uh, can run about two grand. But uh, you can find these things in fairly decent condition for, you know, a couple hundred bucks. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I'll let you guys go. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.